In the last video, you saw how to customize a Microsoft Teams conversational bot to respond with different messages if the bot is activated within a channel. Now in this video, you're gonna see how to customize that same bot to respond with an adaptive card when activated, as well as update existing messages and handle message reactions. So in this section, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna update the bot to respond to unknown messages with an adaptive card. So the card's single action is gonna trigger the bot to update the existing message with a new adaptive card. The updated message will include additional, an additional action that'll trigger the bot to delete the message. So inside of our existing bot that you see right here, uh, we're gonna, I wanna go through and add in a little bit of code. So let's go find our constructor where everything's happening. And I wanna check for the else statement right here. So you see this else statement that we have. Let's go through and let's change this entire bit of code that you see here. We're gonna add in a lot of additional stuff. All right, so what is this gonna do? So when nothing is listed, and when we don't know what the message is that comes in, we're gonna create a new card action uh, that's got set to update. And we're gonna create then an adaptive card. So this is our entire adaptive card. And we'll see what that looks like when it renders in just a moment. We're then gonna send the card back to Microsoft Teams. Now, before we do this, I wanna, I wanna take a look at one thing here. Notice that we've created this value object where it has two properties, a card action and account. If you take a look at our adaptive card, notice that in the action section, we have a data property that is being set to this value and that's gonna be sent back and forth. Uh, it's gonna update the adaptive card when it sends it to Microsoft Teams for rendering and then when we submit the card back to the bot framework, we're gonna get that value object back. Now, the next thing we're gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to add in a couple other uh, method handlers here. I'll explain what these are after we add them in. Now, let's take a look at these two handlers that we just added. So this first handler that you see here, the update card activity, um, this retrieves and increments the count property that it received and it creates a new card with the exact same information. So this card looks almost identical to the last one, but with an additional card or additional action on it for deleting the card. This method uses the update activity method to update an existing message. The delete card activity that you see here, so you see our update activity where it's updating the existing message and I'm passing in not only the card, but I'm also passing in the ID of the message to update. The bot can do that because the message that it's updating is a message that it replied with, so it can update its own messages. The delete card activity is gonna do a similar thing, except all it's gonna do is just pass in the ID of the message that it wants to delete. Now the last step is to handle the messages that are sent from the adaptive card correctly. So let's go back up to our, uh, up into our constructor, and within this on message, I need to locate where we're, where we're creating a message that you see, a response that you see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some conditional logic uh, that I need to do to check to determine if the message is an action from our card or is it a message from the user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go wrap all of the existing code here uh, inside of an if statement. And so what you can see here is we're gonna do a check and if, we, if a certain property exists, then we want to we want to work with our new card that we've created. Otherwise, just go do all the, all the um, additional stuff that you are already doing, all right? What I want to do is I want to check to see if my message that's being passed in is from my adaptive card or if it's from the user. And we can check with that because we have a context object and I can look at the activity to see if there's a value object on, that acti on the activity. If there is, then I know it was sent or submitted from the uh, adaptive card. And then what we want to do is I want to insert the logic in here if we are coming from our adaptive card. So all that you see here is that we're doing a new switch statement that says if it's an update event that's being passed in or an update action from our card being passed in, we'll call the update card activity. If it's a delete, then we'll call our delete card activity. So let's take this uh, for a run. Let's see how this works. So everything is working. We just have a couple little linting errors, which we don't really care about. Um, and let's come back over here to the browser and let's come uh, just off the tab and let's actually do this in a one-to-one -one chat. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll just say uh, hello. So we, we still have our existing thing like the mention me. 
then it's still going to work the exact same way it worked before. So it's still going to mention, going to get the request uh, from uh, Microsoft Teams. Our bot is going to respond with saying, well, we know where you are. The next one is, let's just give it a message that it doesn't understand. Remember, this is the one that it should respond with our adaptive card. Uh, hello, and let's go back and double check this for a second. And oh, we did actually have a message for hello. So we don't want to use hello and we don't want to use help. So let's use something else like, I don't know, something else. All right, now we got our card. So this is the card that's being sent back. And this is the initial card that's being sent. Now this one, there's no count on this right now. The count's uh, zero, but notice it also has the update card button, but not the delete card button. If I click update card, that's going to submit the card back to the bot and the bot's going to respond and it's going to increment the counter. If I do it again, it'll do the exact same thing. Increment it by one, increment it by two, increment it by three. I can then delete the card and that'll actually delete the message and now the message is gone. So you can see how we're actually able to give it that kind of control over modifying um, our, uh, our uh, uh, messages that the bot has created. So in this demo, let's update the bot to respond when someone likes a message from the bot. So let's come back over to our bot. So let's try and find a, a reaction. There we go. So we have an on message reaction. I'm going to replace the code inside this one uh, with some of my own code. This code is going to execute when a user adds a reaction to a message from the bot. So for example, if the reaction is a like, then I'm going to respond with a thank you. So let's come back over to our bot and let's respond. Let's send a message to it. So hello. Now let's perform a reaction here. So I'm going to put use the uh, love reaction here, but we shouldn't get any any kind of response to it because we're not making it's not a like response. Um, if I say if I do another uh, action here and if I like the response by giving it a thumbs up, the bot should respond and say thank you, which it does. So fantastic, that's exactly what we were looking for uh, to happen. So in this demo, we modified our existing Microsoft Teams app to update the bot to respond to message reactions as well as update or delete uh, messages. Uh, that's a capability that the bot can do.